Well, we had the story of Gideon, and musical instruments are a major part of this story. So it's only a natural thing that if they're going to play something, let's let's do a marching band. We started with this simple concept of tubas and flashlights. They're carrying around tubas and carrying around flashlights. I thought it was kind of weird and kind of uh, strange, and then I remembered that what makes our best shows the best shows are that we do weird things. It was a wonderful story, a Bible story that you know, all of us around the development table remembered from our childhoods and really wanted to tell the story. Prepare to be boarded! Of us, ye regular hosts! We're pirate in this broadcast! Well, the pirates have hopped on the countertop to take over the show because they've never had a chance to take over the show. And, you know, Jimmy and Jerry have done it and the French Peas have done it, but the pirates have never taken over the show before. You know, bringing the pirates on and kind of setting it up to do a little pirate movie promotional. I wrote the countertop with the pirates in it and just had a lot of fun with it. And you know, they, they did well on the countertop. Hilarious stuff. The uh, I think the Antsies in my pantsies is one of our best lines ever. Antsies in me pantsies. <laughs> it's just absurd. Having um, you know Gideon be a warrior and being you know being in a warrior marching band and his brothers being football players there's just a lot of really neat things that kind of came together that that gave it a lot of fun Bonjour, brothers. <laughs> hey ha ha yeah that's real funny guys I was a sports guy although I didn't play football in high school my mom wouldn't let me but then once I got to college um, I got to play football in junior high actually I was in the I was in the band so I was definitely a little more of the, the band person than the sports person. I was a sports guy, so you know I was, I was listening to the band. Well, I was a band geek, definitely the band geek side of things. I was an art guy. I was in the chorus and the, the art, uh, art classes and that kind of thing. Uh, well, who else can sing around here? Every time we do a show, you know, the casting is one of the more interesting things that we go through, just kind of sorting through who's the right person to play that character. Paul feels a little bit more like Clarence in It's a Wonderful Life as he comes down, so, um, but with a, a little bit more moxie. I think Paul works really well as the angel, uh, just because he's really short and Larry's really tall, and that's always really funny. How musical is Larry? Well, he plays the tuba, so, you, I mean, you got to be partly musical there to just pick up the thing and blow on it. There's hardly an instrument more funny than a tuba. The lamps became flashlights, and instead of the, the jars that they had to break and make all the noise, we turned that into the drum line. What's it going to sound like if a bunch of flashlights are hitting the rocks? So I kind of started with just this little cadence. Of the Lord and of Well, if Gideon didn't trust God, you know, Israel would have been defeated. You know, God had a plan uh, to save Israel from the Midianites, and, um, you know, he chose to use Gideon to help him in that plan. And so I think um, we have the decision whether we're going to act in the position that God puts us in. Such a wonderful lesson about putting everything you have, your trust in God, knowing that there's no way on earth I can do this by myself. That was real nice. It was touching, yet lighthearted. I was moved. This was an interesting silly song because it kind of came out of Tim Hodge's mouth, the concept and the idea, and he's always got a ukulele sitting around playing it. Haven't you heard of the Turtle Tubies? Very popular show all over oh, television. Man. Oh, wait a minute. Hey, guys, I don't think this is right. It doesn't make any sense. It works for us. I say ukulele. I had never heard it said ukulele. You know, I say ukulele because I say it wrong. Uh, ukulele, but I know that that's not correct. The Hawaiian correct pronunciation is ukulele. Put a little apostrophe in front of the U for that sound. Ukulele. Ukulele. Jumping flea. Wait a minute! I just thought of something! What if we tell Rachel a story? <laughs> that might help! That's worked in the past. We were looking for a companion piece for Gideon, another story that was going to demonstrate what it meant to have trust in God. Well, George Mueller came up as, as seemingly one that, that, you know, his life was sort of about an exercise in trusting God. You know. He believed that if I prayed for something and I had faith it would happen and, you know, I was doing the right thing, then God will provide my needs. And he actually kept a journal that, you know, if he prayed for something on Monday, 
he would record it later when that when the prayer was answered. He wanted to prove to the world God does answer prayer. Look, maybe I can run out and... Uh, uh Mr. Mueller? I, I couldn't sleep last night. Somehow I felt you didn't have bread for breakfast, and the Lord wanted me to send you some. We chose to use His Eyes on the Sparrow as, as a hymn in that, you know, that the kids are singing. And I think it's just a, it's such a great song, uh, and, and I think it really, that gets across the idea that I think would be great to come across to kids. It's just the idea that God cares for us so much that we don't need to worry. He just trusted God to meet their needs every single day. And every single day, God did. A time in my life when I had to trust God was when my daughter was in the hospital. And during that time, she got sick. Uh, twice, actually, and we realized that even though we had to trust God, there was no promise that she was going to be okay. The only promise was that God would take care of us. And Gideon says, I thought God was just going to tell me, well done, and the angel has that great line. It's my favorite line in the whole show. He said, if you want to hear God say, well done, you've got to do what he asks. The core is, is finding out what it is God wants for you. If you know what he wants for you, it's a lot easier to separate what you need and what you want. God has a plan, and you know we're called by him um, into that plan to be to be to be used. And so uh, we just need to trust that God is in control. And God knows what he's doing, and then it's our job to obey um, and and to do what he asks us to do.